Hello, welcome to another episode of Optics 3 Debates. I'm Andras. My name is Taylor. Hello. And as you can see, we have here finally a scope with an Allen yeah, rail. Real. So this is a rare occurrence today that we yeah. are actually able to witness the scope. And this is a great opportunity to actually do a short video review on the LM rail. So, uh, Theodore, can you tell us a little bit about the history of LM rail? Well, LM rail was, uh, at least a couple of years ago, it was the most common and the most popular type of rails on the scopes. As we probably already explained in many other videos, rail mounting is always better than ring mounting. Although, rail mounting is only popular in Europe. In the US, in Japan, in all other countries, you rarely see a scope with a, with a uh, mounting rail on the housing beneath the central tube. And the LM rail was one of the first rails of this kind and almost all European producers were producing this type of rail. It's like a prism, sometimes you also see it, it's called a prism rail. Uh, however, in today, 2018, I think that only Karl Cups some Noblex Doctor, now they are in transition from Doctor name to Noblex name, some of their scopes and some Schmidt and Bender scopes still feature LM rail. And already with all these last three producers, I would say it's less and less common to, to see the LM rail. So this is a dying breed. This is also the reason why we didn't make this video before because <laughs> we got this uh, scope back for, for some cleaning uh, and we got the opportunity to see the LM rail because from new scopes in our stock we have 2000 rifle scopes in our stock but still uh, I don't know I think we don't have not a single one with LM rail. We still <laughs> have mounts for LM rail. We have but, a lot of uh, mounts for yeah. them because there are still a lot of these uh, rifle scopes on the market in use right now. In use yeah in, I would say in, in thousands uh, in really high numbers so uh, producers of mounts, they are still producing mounts for, for this type of, uh, of rail on scopes. We have here a mount for Blazer R8 uh, or an R93 and all other Blazer rifles. And we have a Reknagel mount uh, for Picatinny rail, uh, which features LM rail uh, parts, mounting parts on top. And we have many other, uh, I would say we have a couple of thousands of, uh, of different mounts for LM rail because they're still available on the market even though they're rarely sold. The rifle scopes are rarely, rarely sold today with this type of rail. Um, okay, so uh, that was a little bit about history. Thank you for that. Um, now, are there any advantages and disadvantages of mounting with the LM rail? Well, the advantages is that uh, you get a more reliable mounting solution with the rail and you get a less tension on the scope, it's more robust, it's more reliable, more material, it's better in any way. And also, uh, sometimes with, uh, with uh, scopes, with uh, rings, uh, well, not sometimes, every time you have to make sure that the horizontal line is really aligned with the, with the horizon. So sometimes this is quite difficult to achieve. And with, with rail mounting, this is not the case. With rail mounting, you always have the uh, horizontal line and the reticle uh, aligned with the horizontal. Um, so that there are many advantages. It will withstand recoil better, it will work longer, it will be more reliable and so on. So we're talking about the standard... Uh, advantages of every rail yeah, mounting. Yeah. yeah, of every rail mounting. Yeah. Yeah. What is a disadvantage is that with LM rail, the rail was designed and meant so to be mounted in a way that you, there are um, that you make holes through the rail itself. The gunsmith needs to to produce holes on specific uh, positions, so that if you check this mount, you see that screws go through the hole and then they clamp the rail together. So and this is problematic because only really experienced uh, gunsmiths can do this. And do this well and there is a lot of work to, to to make a hole through the rail and that the hole is in the exact position and so on so this is the biggest disadvantage and this is the reason why this rail is dying out why every every producer uh, almost all producers already stopped the production of scopes with this type of rail uh, because making of the holes through the yeah, rail is quite, yeah it's it's yeah 
an error happened already here when it was mounted maybe 15 years ago or 20 years ago uh, and in today's world where people many times mount the scopes by themselves you know we live in a world of uh, do it yourself of course yeah. uh, this is a no-go because it's really hard and you need a special equipment and so on to produce a hole at a specific so distance mount so manufa on. manufacturers are striving to uh, to manufacture mounts that would be very easy to mount and yeah. that the customer himself or herself could mount it very in a simple way. True. This is the reason why there are new types of rails. We, we have a lot of videos about the size ZMVM standard of rails which is very popular. Many producers use them like Leica, Minox, Meopta, many others. Then we have the Swarovski SR rail which is used also by Kales and we have the Schmidt and Bender convex rail so three modern standards which don't which need upgrade of the LM rail yeah you don't need to drill holes through them you just use five screws and it works and it's really easy to mount them uh, so they have all the advantages of the LM rail without the disadvantage of uh, that you need to produce a hole through the through the you, that you need to drill a hole through the rail and this is I think uh, all those scopes which are still on the market and which still need to be mounted I understand that uh, most of these scopes are still high quality scopes today in today's standard so I understand people that they buy specific mounts which are still available for all of these scopes and that the gun, they give this to gunsmiths and they mount it uh, I also understand that all producers of modern scopes they're passing out this rail and they're using more modern standards, better standards, which uh, can be mounted by anyone. Not so with time, LM rail will eventually disappear. Uh, yeah. yeah. With time. Yeah, I think in, in 10 years from now, the mounts will not disappear. I think that all the European producers will still produce mounts uh, for LM rail. And there is really a plenty big of a selection of LM mounts. You can check on our website. We have a couple of thousands of different options. And there isn't a possible rifle, uh, at least I don't know for any rifle, that you were not able to mount LM rail scope on the rifle. Because there are so many mounts for them. Uh, however, I do think that sooner or later all the producers will stop to produce this rail, this type of rail, this standard. That's basically it from the uh, description of the LM rail. Thank you, Theodore. I I hope we covered everything. I hope we covered everything. If we didn't, you can always leave a comment down. I remembered yeah. one thing also. Uh, they're all the same. Sometimes we get a question, is uh, LM rail on Schmidt and Bender the same as LM rail on old Kales scopes? Yeah, they're all the same. So the standard is the same? The standard is the same. The only difference is that some really old scope have a small part of the rail also on the, on the objective bell. And there only a really experienced gunsmith can produce a mount which features a clamping uh, part for the LM rail but it has different heights because there is a small part of LM rail also on the objective mm -hmm. part. Then you, you need a good gunsmith for that. But apart from that, the, the dimensions of the, of the rail is completely the same. The angle is 70 degrees uh, between each of the surface, surfaces. At least I think it's 70. I think it's 70. If I made a mistake, please correct me, but I think if the angle is 70 and uh, the dimension here is around 15 or something like that. So they're all the same, so every mount will go on each LM rail, on no matter which producer made it. Thank you very much for this edition, so uh, okay. now it's even more complete, but if you still find anything that we forgot to mention, you can always leave a comment down in the comment section or send us an email. And remember to like, subscribe, and see you next time, of course, in the next episode. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye.